Hello, welcome to the session of Open Education Champions. Open Education Champions is a chance to talk to important open education advocates and actors, which is why we're talking to you here today as our Open Education Champion. Um, and the intent of this series is for students, teachers, pedagogues, and practitioners of open education, like yourself, to first of all discuss the importance of open education, but also to share experiences with facilitating the creation um, of more OER to inspire others to do the same. And in this process, what also we would like to do is to underlie, underlie the role of librarians. So my name is Agata Morka. I am communications officer at Spark Europe, and I am very pleased to welcome Marcelo Fabian Maina, who is professor at the Universitat Oberta de Catalunya in Spain. I hope that I, I pronounced everything correctly. Perfect. Welcome, Marcelo. Thank you very Hello. much, Agata. Great, great to have you here. Um, so I think that we're just going to dive into, into questions here. So to start, um, Please tell us um, a little bit more about your work with OER and or open pedagogy more broadly. Um, and how did you come to be involved in open education? And perhaps there were some librarians on the way that supported you on this open education journey. Thank you again, Agatha. Thank you for this invitation to, and the possibility to share some part of my uh, journey into open education. I don't know if I'm a champion, it's, I would say I'm a practitioner and I, I like to share these ideas and also hear from the others. So very good initiative. Congratulations for that. So uh, how was, uh, I, I got involved in that? It's, it's kind of a, probably a long story <laughs> in, in the sense because I have started as a student exploring uh, the learning uh, objects approach. I was more focused at that moment in uh, more technicalities, metadata and repositories and interoperability. And of course there was something lacking in that. And then the open educational resources um, concept appeared, um, focusing more on pedagogy and that interested me much, much more. Mm -hmm. I really got involved and in starting um, developing some knowledge on the subject and, and, and experience, uh, I would say thanks to EU projects, European projects. Uh, mm -hmm. As a professor and, and researcher, I've been involved in many European projects and I remember having different approaches and experiences, gaining some knowledge in each of them some very, very different from, from a different perspective. Um, I'd like to mention, for example, one that was very challenging that was the OER test. We were exploring uh, how open educational resources learning games could be in a certain way um, recognized by uh, institutions, for example, particularly higher education institution or in, in vet education. Mm -hmm. In that sense, we developed different scenarios and that took us to reflect on uh, self-directed learning, how students could engage in um, open uh, uh, learning through the access to different uh, learning resources, all the challenges that uh, that suppose. And I would develop, as I said, a certain uh, uh, scenarios uh, that were in a certain way different in each other uh, based on the use of, of uh, open educational resources for learning and recognition. There was another interesting project from a very different approach. There was the CONCEIT project uh, that focused more on learner generated content. And this sense is how to empower learners in the development of open educational resources that could be of use to other students. And then we in incorporated this concept of learner generated content together with uh, all the affordances of the Web 2.0, just uh, taking advantage of that uh, uh, more uh, prosumer approach uh, to, uh, to the web in terms of producing knowledge and, of course, in the framework of our facilitated learning experience, monitored by, by teachers and regarding quality on the, all those production. And let me tell you that it was a very good experience and very mm -hmm. good quality open educational resources, resources mm, developed by students for the students with their own languages and great. the way of understanding challenges in, in, in certain mm -hmm. ways of activities and knowledge. And I like to cite another one that is uh, another approach that was more focused on and this evolution of o OER to OEP, open educational oh. practices. And oh, okay. uh, we had a, 
a very interesting project, uh, an alpha one uh, with Latin America, where we were four universities in Europe with, at, remember, were seven, eight uh, universities in Latin America, from Costa Rica to Uruguay, Peru, Ecuador. And we've been working on how to foster open education mindset and practices within institutions targeting the development of policies uh, within the higher education institution, but also uh, training teachers in the open education movement and the opportunities that open education and practices could offer in terms of mm -hmm. access, flexibility, empowerment of teachers and uh, learners, and, and the need for development of um, a policy with the institution, encouraging and supporting uh, teachers. And there are many other, I don't know, I can mention some other approaches like the Euro Portfolio Network, where we've been working on ePortfolio. And mm -hmm. this network developed a whole platform that was open with a lot of set of resources that were developed within the project, like a maturity matrix one, that helping uh, institutions um, assessing uh, the level of um, adoption of ePortfolio from zero to very high. Uh, mm -hmm. But then we developed their um, and in in um, in line with that with that moment, we develop a MOOC uh, based oh, on yes. all okay. the all the gather information we have um, collected at that moment. To say, well, this is a good opportunity to develop a MOOC and connect to other uh, European projects where we are uh, working together in parallel. There was the EMA one in the development of a EU-based platform for MOOCs uh, uh, that would go. They would approach the platform from a different perspective based more on a more personalized learning. So we took advantage mm -hmm. of that when we developed book. As you see, uh, each experience builds on other and approaches from different uh, perspectives. Uh, and in this sense, this project uh, encourages ideas and innovation. So we've been um, thinking always uh, with this open education mindset uh thinking about how we could um in a certain way uh also uh, through our example promote that approach within projects and in this sense uh, we have uh, the support from our librarians in in our university in particular that um they uh took um very serious the idea of an open repository they developed that within that and there was a synergy between what we were doing and what they were doing and this opened the opportunity uh, to publish in, in this open repository all the deliverables and production from this project that we found uh, um, of interest for the community also um, facing this problem of website where projects, you know, uh, and web project websites sometimes disappear. And that is, uh, that is very mm -hmm. sad because there's been a lot of effort put there and uh, very interesting productions. So the mm -hmm. open repositories in our institution or others, I mean, also there are meta repositories, uh, were ways of keeping record of all these uh, productions in, uh, in these, these experiences. That's that's wonderful. Thank you so much. I mean, it's really impressive. There is a plethora of approaches that you that you mentioned, and I'm very glad to see that there are librarians involved. There are these synergies that you that you mentioned there. Um, so I think that you touched on it already a little bit, but I would like to dig a little bit deeper here. So I wanted to ask about your institution. So who has benefited from open education at your institution specifically? but also as well as beyond your institution. And um, what would you say have been the key benefits? Well, I would say everyone, uh, from teachers to students, and from mm -hmm. teachers, I'll say, or if you prefer faculty lecturers, professors, um, in their different roles. Because uh, as you know, usually university have uh, this um, role of, of, of professors as uh, teachers as facilitators, but also as researchers. So mm -hmm. uh, in this sense, the open education uh, movement, I think, uh, push also the agenda of open research. Uh, in this sense, th creating this um, environment uh, and an awareness on the importance of sharing in the open and giving more access. So in terms of the institution, there were many benefits. Uh, once we have these practices uh, already within the institution and an open repository there and policies that were supporting that. Uh, 
one of the gains we had as an institution was about visibility. In our case, we are an, an open university. We are completely distant, completely online, if you want. Mm -hmm. And it was a way also to, to, to show how our uh, learning resources were developed within our institution and could be also of use of other institutions. Of course, this, um, this idea of open education will benefit institutions if every institution adopts it and teachers adopt it. So we can uh, provide the community with what we do and increasing visibility and ways of, of, of doing things, in this case of teaching or research we, we produce, and also using the other, uh, reusing uh, the other's uh, production from other institutions and other teachers, uh, or even students, as I mentioned here, uh, mm -hmm. that produce uh, uh, learning resources of interest. So in this sense, it, it went uh, beyond our institution and I think it moved uh, also the situation in terms of uh, thinking uh, better how to establish alliances with other institutions uh, under the umbrella of projects, usually European projects, standard projects, but other projects that were more locally um, developed within, for example, in Catalonia with the support uh, of the government of Catalonia, developing some specific MOOCs. We've been participating in that, uh, that were targeting specific needs. In one of them was in terms of teacher development, for example, of uh, digital competencies. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. It's it's really great to see also these this inter-institutional cooperation under the umbrella of, of open education. Um, I wanted to ask you about um, about success. So what do you see as key successes in the open education movement so far, starting from your own experience? Okay. I'm very enthusiastic and I advocate of open educational uh, resources, practices, and open education and in general. So there's mm -hmm. been a lot of success. If I have to um, think about from my own perspective, it's uh, increased uh, my teaching practices and uh, the way of transforming education and innovating, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, there was a, a general gain to this, this initiative of the open textbooks that uh, are um, collectively uh, developed and uh, uh, keeping an up-to-date information, reducing uh, price, uh, prices of access. But on the other hand, uh, we were used to learning experience where we use this kind of uh, text was as a skeleton of a course, while the open educational resources was moving that even uh, forward and further. Mm -hmm. And we start conceiving our courses and giving the opportunity to our students to access different voices in different formats mm -hmm. and, and different ways of, of articulating these learning experiences. Uh, think about how easy it was to integrate um, open educational resources uh, from the web, for, uh, but also, for example, increasing access to other expertise and in inviting, for example, experts within your courses. So this, this is a movement that does not um, end in the idea of an encapsulated knowledge in an object like OER, but I think it pushes the agenda of open educational practices and it pushes also the, the agenda of uh, open sciences. So, so these are the kind of successes that it has, like the effects it has on other things. If we just make a kind of trajectory, this is a very personal one, uh, reflection uh, on, on this mm -hmm. trajectory. We went from learning knowledge to open, to open educational resources, to practices, and then in the meantime, we also challenged the idea of open educational resources as a, as a piece, but more as a, for example, a sequence uh, that can be shared. Remember the open courseware approach from MIT? That mm -hmm. was thinking about more in terms of an articulated set of open educational resources with a purpose mm -hmm. in mind. And we started thinking about the diversity of open educational re resources, not isolated, but integrated. And this moved towards also the idea of MOOCs in, in this sense. And MOOCs mm -hmm. as, as, as open to the world uh, courses also were thought in different ways. And one of them is how to integrate it into formal education also. So as you see, uh, I think the, the successes can be measured in different ways. And one of them is in terms of the effects it, it, it has. Uh, and I think this is an experience personal one, but I think it can be also uh, interpreted for a more broader uh, uh, 
approach. Absolutely. I very much like how you talk about uh, about open education in terms of the movement, that it's something which is which still pushes the boundaries, which which is trying to, to move forward. Um, so we are very much on a journey here. So uh, that brings me to my next question. Uh, what do you think what still needs to be done for open education to truly take hold and what are still the most pressing challenges? OK, we usually refer to that to the business models. So how, mm -hmm. how we can make that sustainable. So there are many <laughs> different business models that have been uh, tied out. We still have mm -hmm. to improve a little bit that without any specific support from government institutions. There's also the financial level of, in all that that is important to ensure. So this is a, still a challenge, even if we have uh, explored different uh, the approaches and models. There are competing forces. I, I think from, for example, for-profit organizations like uh, editorials and, and, and commercializers of uh, learning resources or, 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 or research. Although we see, we have also had an effect, going back to our previous question, an effect in terms of how these um, companies and these enterprises are reacting to that. And mm -hmm. um, for example, they are very uh, interested now in offering different uh, ways of publishing the open. Uh, some models are more, I would say, um, how could I say that? I feel more comfortable with them. Some others know. Mm -hmm. uh, but we see that there's a whole movement in terms of open education and open data that is pushing that part also. And this is a challenge uh, for uh, the open education movement. But I think we are gaining um, um, gaining uh, momentum and, and solutions are being in, in put into place. So um, I'm very confident in, in this sense. There are some other challenges I could mention as if I think about uh, uh, the professional practice in terms of the recognition uh, of uh, this yeah. effort we make as, as, as mm -hmm. professors in a developing open educational um, uh, resources and, and putting that in the open. So we still need like a recognition of open publication as a quality mark, not only of research, but also of learning materials. And this must be in a certain way embedded in this and recognized in the standard processes we go through in the evaluation of our own career. So this is still must mm -hmm. be made more visible in mass from my point of view. Of view. And of course, we always need improvement in terms of policies and, and support mm -hmm. from the institutions because uh, the lonely rider does not go too far. So yeah. we, we need that, go together and having the support of. Absolutely. Uh, I, I would say that it's crucial actually to have the support uh, and policy behind you that supports your efforts. Um, about the future. So, Marcelo, what are your plans for the future with open education? Oh, uh, I think I'm just making this reflection in, during this interview. I think, I think that the best way is keeping on in this um, road I've been, I, uh, I've been through these years. Uh, mm -hmm. I just saw how um, the participation in different approaches and this development of a mindset in open education can benefit from uh, two other two other projects. Oh, we always try to think about in these terms when we think about a uh, uh, project that we develop. Uh, for example, of course, we have already um, some conditions that are made from the EU uh, explicit targeting this idea of open publishing of data and results, but also um, in ways we approach those uh, projects. Let me. For example, good ex examples are good to illustrate that. Mm -hmm. uh, in a recent project, Horizon 2021, and the name was Chris, and it was about the development and assessment of digital competence in K-12, we had many different ways to approach that. You know? But we decided to use this idea of open educational practices that was very, very beneficial. We've been working with researchers, learning designers, and teachers from different uh, countries in uh, Europe in the development of this competency-based uh, um, uh, learning scenarios and assessment scenarios. And we did it, we did it with this 
open uh, principles in mind. So we mm -hmm. uh, infuse that into the project and we could um, uh, see how was beneficial this idea of collaborating uh, uh, between um, professionally the development of this scenario. It was not a centralized wide, it was a distributed wide, it was based on collaboration uh, and cooperation in this idea of contribution of a collective intelligence <laughs> encapsulated in these in this, um, scenarios that ended also in the development of, of as a set of good scenarios that were published in open educational repositories uh, for the reuse, thinking about all the dimension of uh, easing the uh, reuse of that, not only in terms of uh, licenses, but also in, in technical ones. Uh, uh, for example, thinking about how we provide that not only in PDF format, the thing we, we, we took that reflection that we already had at, as researchers in the field to these teachers that were participating for the first time in that, and we had them reflect on all those aspects uh, that are important um, to easy the way of adoption of open educational resources, for example. In this case, we are learning a scenarios and assessment scenarios that could be localized and contextualized to um, their own needs or institutional constraints. So as you see, this is the way I think uh, we can, we, I can continue with that, is infusing all these ideas into different solutions and procedures within our projects and in the sense advocate and disseminate huh? based on good practices, because we already have a lot of good practices to support and back up our approach. Wonderful. Uh, well, I think that all I can say is I wish you all the best with your future in, in open education. Thank you again for being here with us and for this great conversation. And uh, we really look forward to sharing it with the broader OE community. Thank you Thank again. You. Thank you very much. I'm eager also to listen to other uh, testimonies to learn from them. Absolutely. Yes. Yes, please do. Yes.